Um, nibs are nicer than pens because you can get a little bit more of a line width. However, it also requires a lot more stuff that you bring around with you. We're talking about making like a, this where you want to be? Yeah. Okay, good. How is it? Um, so this is kind of what you can do with either nib is um, really give you some nice line variation. Generally though to make darker shading you have to do a lot of patching. Oh. A lot of I don't like them because they tend to pull and like snag on papers is what I find. And you can't go backwards with them so you're yeah. limited in You can paper. only pretty much go down or to a side of them. So you're always turning your paper and turning everything. What I like to use instead is a brush and it's a fancy brush. So it comes in the tube. But this is my brush. It is a Windsor Newton Series 7 ink brush and it makes it like crazy expensive. Um, but they are really amazing. You can pull really fine and really fat lines with them. And I, yes? I have to say they're only amazing if you know how to take care of them. I've, I've been using them for years and hating them because I didn't know how to take care of them. So I was using these ruined brushes and I didn't know they were ruined. I thought I was just a monster at anything. They can also be, they have a very um, steep learning curve, is you're going to spend a lot of time if you try to ink with a brush just hating it because they are, unless you have a very delicate drawing hand already, you're going to wind up with a lot of <laughs> and then um, just ink all over. Um, so I like them because you can get a very animated line from them, but like I said, they're hard to use. And um, they're not very portable as well. Once again, you get a lot of stuff that you got to carry with you. And like Rebecca said, the easy answer to this is I like actual bristle brushes, and um, that's why I don't like brush pens that have okay. yeah that have like the felt tip because those like you kind of get ruined. But there are um, a lot of different brush pens that actually have bristles. Um, they have synthetic or usually synthetic bristles. Yeah, the expensive and, ones have the natural bristles, and they'll come with ink reservoirs in them. And those are probably the best alternative to having hair my brush around with all the time. Um, other tools you need to make comics. You're obviously going to need a ruler, T-square, triangle, or straight edge of some kind. Um, T-squares and triangles. Um, T-squares and triangles are great because they give you this nice corner so that you know you're making a yeah, square, sorry. corner panel. And everyone on it. They're big, sometimes they're comfy. People use them as weapons. Really. Yes, really. Um, you use this one as I, I fought off hobos in ghetto a lot with my, yes. You, yes, okay. my first semester. Nice, well, T-squares, also a weapon. Um, this ruler, probably also a weapon. Yes, kind it's, of heavy. it's awesome. They don't, they don't mess with me when I have that ruler. Um, but you just need something to draw straight lines with. Um, French curves are those funny looking things in the center bottom. You just have everything with you. <laughs> I mean, my curve. I didn't actually plan this. She just says everything. <laughs> That's actually, no, a French curve. This is a French curve. It's invisible, so you can't see it. This is another one. Looks like a butterfly wing. These are good for, um, well, I mean, you use them to make whatever shape. And it's not like you just trace these shapes. You can use them to, like, if you've got that much of a shape and it keeps going like that, you use them piece by piece and you just keep moving them along. I actually don't care for them because if you're using a nib or a brush, the ink is very likely to get underneath it That's and true. what you're doing. It's good for texture. They're good for, and they're also good for doing it in pencil and then mm -hmm. freehanding mm -hmm. it later on. Um, circle and ellipse templates, however, I use a lot. Uh, they're the yellowish brown thing up at the top. I mean, they're circles and ellipses, I mean. Trace them and ta-da! Now the wheels of your cars are round and not lopsided. <laughs> and of course, erasers. Everybody needs erasers. You can get all kinds of drawings. This is a mono eraser. I highly recommend it. Yeah, I like, both of us like the plastic erasers. The white plastic erasers. Mm -hmm. Don't use the pink ones. You just suck with those little pink school erasers. They'll tear up your paper. Needed erasers are pretty good too. All right, now that you have all of your, oh wait, all right, computer programs. You don't necessarily need these. Um, I make most of my comics by hand, but I do, you know, you scan them, you edit them in Photoshop. And um, 
if you do your text in Photoshop or whatever program, then you will need a computer program. Um, most of you, I'm sure, are familiar at least a little bit with Photoshop. You know what it is, kind of what it does. Yeah, it's kind of the standard. Um, it's expensive, unfortunately. Um, Adobe Illustrator is a lot harder to use, but some people like using it for comics because you can get very uh, sleek looking word balloons and stuff like that. I hate it. Um, then there's Corel Painter. Um, oh, I, I am recording this. You're, you're the one at school. Who like, like, she turns up her nose because the rest of us hate Illustrator. And she's like, I like Illustrator. I like ah, Illustrator. Hot, hot, I hate hot, using hot. Illustrator for comics. <laughs> you were mentioning uh, erasers. What about like the, the clip pen erasers? Are, are, I mean, are they oh. about the same as the, the white one? Oh, yeah. yeah, they're very similar. The only problem is if you use a darker lead, like a, a B, it will smudge. But I use a B, and I also use clip yeah. erasers. And what's great is you can stick them in a pencil sharpener, like those little hand pencil sharpeners, and get a fine point. She also has this great one from Japan. Japan makes the best manga things ever. Like, you know, you're like, know, oh, really? Like, surprise! Yeah, it's like not really a surprise. Um, <laughs> we actually got to visit Japan this past uh, winter. And you just go into like their department stores and they just have like manga supplies. And you're like, <laughs> this is like, you know, $200 stuff in the US and here it is for like 30 bucks. Um, Japan's is actually really good about having a wide selection of Japanese manga and uh, office supplies for a fairly reasonable price too. Yeah. It's just a lot harder to find some of these things in uh, the US without looking online. This is a very teeny tiny little eraser that great for fine details. Um, the thing about clip erasers is that if you're erasing a whole page, you don't want to use those because obviously it's very hard to use it. use electric erasers, which, um, <laughs> what are you laughing at? Your electric eraser always goes I hate in your bag. Yeah. That's why it's not in there anymore. I had a Sakura electric eraser because I could find it very really easily and because it was cheap and because it was small and because uh, the erasers didn't tear up the page. The problem with electric erasers is you're pencil heavy like I am, it will just skip across the page and not pick up everything. And you also have to be careful to let it dry fully or else it will gray out your inks. Um, anyway, computer programs. There's also Corel Painter. I've never used it for comics. I like to use it for color. But um, There's Manga Studio, which I know a lot of people swear by. Um, I haven't used it, but I know quite a lot of comic people who say it's great because it has Templates for like all the different panels. You have um, speed lines and you can whip out perspective. Yeah, that. screen tones, perspective stuff, backgrounds, like tricks to make backgrounds easier. Like I said, I've never used it. A lot of people swear by it. Um, and see, I also just like doing it by hand because I like being able to see it, having the feeling of doing it, um, and being able to see the entire page at once. So. If you like using the computer, I would say Manga Studio is probably pretty good. It's a little bit expensive again, I think it's about four hundred dollars, but a lot of students are discounts on here. Um paint tool size, another program I have a lot of friends that swear by. Another one I haven't used. And then there's free alternatives like GIMP yeah, and Open Canvas. And no, open canvas though, like it's like one point one, one is the, the only free. Yeah, one. the newer ones are not free. And with that, um I've never used it, I just know it exists. I have, I have the Adobe screen, so. Mm -hmm. And then, that's a lot of stuff. Um, and it seems like, you know, you're looking like all these things, like, wow, I have to get nibs, all these nibs, and, you know, brushes. Um, not really. I mean, these are several, one of those, the one on the left is my bag, and then uh, two other of my friend's supplies. You don't need all of it. You'll find what you work with the best, and so it's not like, don't go out and make a huge investment in all these um, supplies. You know, try out things sometimes, find new different things, but you're going to wind up using what works best for you and just using that. And it's a lot easier that way. Let's see. So, now we have stuff to make comics with, so let's make comics. When we start, everyone has a story to tell. Um, comics are really just stories told, um, well, in we, what we um, call them in our department is sequential art, so they're told sequentially. Um, they're, com they're stories told with pictures that, you know, not illustration, they're combined together. You all know that, you read manga. Um, when you start off making comics, short stories are usually better to start with. 
Um, and I'm saying, you know, you can make anything from a one to two page comic, eight page comic, maybe a 30 page comic. But you want something reasonable that you're going to be able to work on without either losing interest in or changing your art so drastically that you're not working on the same story anymore. Um, a lot of artists do out of bio comics. Uh, do you guys know the comic Johnny Wonder? Take from the blank stairs. Um, there's other auto bio comics out there, and generally, it's you know what that person did with their day, told in a humorous manner, and it'll often involve their friends, and that's you know those are really fun and easy comics to do. It's a great way to learn comics because it's like a journal comic. You know, you can doodle them out real fast. They don't have to look fantastic, but it's a great way to start telling stories. Um, gag cartoons and comic strips are also a really good way to start telling your stories as well. Um, you can do like fantasy and um, what I did is some of my early comics was doing a lot of fairy tales is because those are already written, they're short stories and uh, you don't have to put too much um, new stuff in. But you know, everyone has their 2,000 page epic, you know, whether it's a space epic or their, their pirate epic or whatever. You probably want to avoid doing that as your first comic, um, mostly because as you, during com as you do comics, you're figuring things out for yourself. And you might get, you know, 50 pages in, hate everything you've done, and now you've got 50 pages of comics that has no conclusion, and you don't want to, you know, redo them, and so you've just taken your baby and you've destroyed it. So you probably don't want to do that until you're pretty confident with what you're doing. Um, the easiest way to start a comic, or I should say the best way to do it, is with a script. A script doesn't have to be um, like an absolute, like you guys have seen film scripts maybe? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Where it doesn't have to be, you know, act by act and, um, you know, this person's dialogue exactly and then person A steps into the room, person B walks across the room. It doesn't have to be that detailed. Um, it can sometimes just be uh, bullet points, like, you know, you want these things to happen on this page, and then later you'll go and break it down. Or you want them to get from here to here, and um, it's figuring out how they do that. Scripts are a lot easier to revise than art, so that's why I recommend you also with the script, if you know where you're starting, what you're doing in the middle, and where you're going to. Uh, it makes it a lot easier. You don't start to get lost and wander around. And um, I've done that before with comics. I'm like, I don't know where I'm going with this story. <laughs> Whoops. Um, so it's easier to have a script than to just plow through it. I actually start off with a synopsis. The synopsis is a one-page summary of your story. And from there, I flesh out my script. It, it helps because it's your game plan. Instead of trying to write 30 pages of script, you're starting with one page of synopsis. Um, in the professional comic world, but um, in like, I'm going to use Marvel, DC, Omni Press, um, Image, any of them as examples. A lot of times, writers and artists will be separate, and they'll give you a script. So um, that's also where having a script can come in. Uh, then you also need to make other decisions about your comic, like what size or format do you want. Most manga is done on um, European and, and Japanese size papers. The U.S. is kind of unique in that we have a paper size system that is only used by us. We have letter legal and you know tabloid stuff like that. No one else uses these sizes. Everyone else uses A4, A3, um, B4, B5, and stuff like that which to me are letters and numbers that don't mean anything. Um, but uh, most manga is either done on B5 paper, which is about yay big, or A4 paper, which is about letter size. Um, and the ratio is slightly different because of that. In the US, and um, this is going to be a heartbreaking thing that I'm going to tell all of you guys, most of us are going to uh, work either online or in the US in the comic industry. There's not a lot of Americans that work in Japan. In fact, there's what, two? Felipe, uh, the guy who does Picocho, and Jamie is doing a shoujo thing for the Don show right now. And it took her like seven years yeah. to get that gig. So there's like two Americans in the uh, in Japan making manga. Most likely you're going to be doing it here either for the internet or for um, a publisher in the US. Or you can do it in Canada or Europe, but we're probably not going to work in Japan. So, 
using American sizes is probably better. We have a two to three ratio on comics. That means uh, thumbnails would be two inches by three inches, um, or you can do six by nine, or you can do fifteen by, or ten by fifteen. That's where I work a lot. Um, but you can also do it, especially if you're doing web comics or independently publishing. You can do it any size, shape, color, whatever you want. Um, 